All right, so let's do intro to calculus. Uh, so we're going to be looking at some sections on some basic calculus skills uh, moving forward. And we're going to be looking at today limits. We'll be looking at derivatives, the difference quotient. Um, and then after that, we'll see. But we're going to start off with doing limits and basically what a limit is and how it's um, tied into calculus. So uh, first off, let's look at these three equations, okay? And we want to find the horizontal asymptote. So as it goes off into positive infinity or negative infinity, what number do each of these approach, okay? So take a second, find the horizontal asymptote of all three of these. Now, if you remember correctly, the uh, to find the horizontal asymptote, you look at the largest exponents at the top and bottom of each of these fractions. So you look at the largest exponents for each one, and then that's going to tell us if it's uh, where our asymptote is. So if the bottom was bigger, that means that we have an asymptote at y equals 0. So the horizontal asymptote would be at 0 because as the x gets larger, the bottom gets larger. And if you have 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, 1 over a million, 1 over a billion, that number gets closer and closer to 0. The next one, since they are exactly the same, that would mean that our horizontal asymptote would be at the coefficients, okay, so 4 over 3. So as that one goes off into infinity, everything kind of drops out except for the 4 and the 3. So we're left with 4 thirds. And the last one, you see that the exponent on top is larger, which means that this one is going to have no asymptote because as it approach goes off into infinity, the top one ends up being larger. It doesn't approach a single number. Uh, this would be a uh, this would end up having an oblique or a slant asymptote because the numerator has a larger uh, larger degree than the bottom by one. So it end up being a oblique or a slant asymptote. Okay, so that's kind of a review for these horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so now with a limit. So now when we have a limit and with these equations, what we're doing is we're asking, okay, what happens as x goes off into infinity? So if I keep plugging in numbers larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, what end up happening to these functions? What number do I approach? What number do I get? Okay, and with these, okay, you end up with the exact same thing as our horizontal asymptotes. Because our horizontal asymptotes are essentially us plugging in larger and larger numbers to see where we get or what we are approaching when it flattens out. In these equations, if you were to plug in 1 million, 1 billion, and again, we're talking about large numbers, 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 1,000th. Okay, we're talking about large numbers here. This is what the number is going to get closer and closer to. That first equation is going to get closer and closer to zero, where the horizontal asymptote was. The second one is going to get closer and closer to four thirds, okay, the horizontal. And the last one is going to end up with infinity. So as we keep plugging in numbers larger and larger and larger, that number keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It doesn't approach a single number, okay? Um, which, since we didn't have a horizontal asymptote, we have to find it, okay? Um, usually it's going to be either infinity or negative infinity, okay? So that's what a limit is, is basically going, what happens as we go towards the number that we want to, which is the bottom. Okay, so limit. So again, a limit tells you uh, at what y value the function approaches at a given x. So how we would say it would be f has a limit of l as x approaches c, and it would be written as follows. Limit as x approaches c, fx is equal to l. And so what's basically happening here is we're going, okay, as our function, as the x value in our function approaches the c value, what's our y? That's all a limit's asking for, is as we get close to the c value, what is the y value? Okay. Now, some of these limits will be actual numbers, some of them will be like infinity, okay? Sometimes we'll get an answer, sometimes we have to do something else to get answers. Okay, so it's not always going to be as straightforward as just plugging a number in using substitution. Okay, okay so uh, these would just be using like basic substitution. So for the first equation, all I would have to do is I'd take this 5 and I'd plug that 5 into the x. So if I plug 5 into x, 7 times 5 is 35 minus 8 gets me my answer of 27. So that first one would end up being 27 because all I have to do is plug in 5. Okay. okay, so take a second and answer the second one. OK, 
Okay, so as the limit approaches a negative 4, we'd end up plugging a negative 4 into both x's. Okay, we plug it into both x's, and then we'd solve our answer. So it'd be 3 times 16 uh, plus 20 plus 8 gets us 76. Okay, um, so 76 ends up being our answer to that one. Now all that has to do is just plug it in. Now if we go to the bottom one, when we plug it in, okay, we end up plugging a 4 into the top and the bottom, and we end up with 0 over 0. But our answer is actually 1 fourth. Okay? If I were to plug in 4 into the top and bottom, I'd get 0 over 0. Well, that's not the same as 1 fourth. Okay? So that means that something else had to be done to get our, our answer. Anything divided by 0 is undefined and so if we ever get anything divided by zero we have to do some work to be able to find what that limit is okay if there is one okay so using this top one okay one way you can do this is by the substitution method and the substitution method basically means is that you plug in numbers as close as you can to four into the function uh, and see if it approaches a number so if my number is 4, I'm going to plug in the number 3.999, so a little bit below it, and 4.001, a little bit above it. And when I do my calculation of those, I end up with just below a quarter and just above a quarter. And I can make the assumption that if I were to keep getting numbers closer and closer to 4, so like 3.9999999999 and 4.000000001, I would get closer and closer to 0.25 as my answer. So I can agree that what's basically happening here is that if this is our curve, okay, what's happening is that as it's moving closer to 4, okay, so if that's 4, this number right here, it doesn't exist at 4 because we end up with 0 in the denominator, but we are getting close on both sides to the same number. And since we're getting close to the same side on both numbers, we would say it is approaching, and we would say this is approaching one fourth. Okay, so if you end up getting an answer that doesn't exist or anything like that, what you're going to want to do is is um, check it, go a little bit below, a little bit above, to see if you can find it. Okay, other way of doing it is using your uh, graphing calculator. So if you have your calculator, okay, you graph this function, you trace it. Uh, if you go along the y, um, go along the graph, and you'll see, or if you look at your table. Okay, and you zoom in towards 4, what you'll see is that you'll see it approaches that number. Okay, so you can adjust your table and you can view it that way. You could uh, use the trace uh, function where you follow along the lines. Again, talking about an 84, TI 83, 84, doing this, um, different methods like that. So you can see it, and if you zoom in close enough, you'll actually see um, the pixel will not show up at 4 because it doesn't exist at 4. Okay, all right but you'll see it approaches it. Okay, so do all functions get limits? And that answer is um, uh, no. They don't all have limits. Okay, sometimes the limit does not exist. Okay, so an example of where a limit doesn't exist is if we take the limit as x approaches zero of one over x. So here's the graph one over x. And if we ask what does the line, what does the function approach when it gets close to zero? You'll notice from the left-hand side, it's approaching negative infinity. And from the right-hand side, it's approaching positive infinity. So since they're not approaching the same number, they would have no limit. Okay, The limit would not exist. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to look at what are called left and right-hand limits. So left and right-hand limits are just taking a limit, but instead of looking at it where it approaches from both sides, you're looking at it where it approaches from one side. So left-hand limit means you're looking at it from the left hand of that point. So if you think of a number line, okay, here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. so if we're looking at the left hand of it and we're looking at 3 as our main point, okay, what numbers are to the left of 3? Well, it's the numbers that are less than 3. So that would be your left hand, which means you would take numbers less than 3. A right hand limit would be everything above 3. Okay, So you're looking at it as it approaches from the left and from the right. Okay. 
Now, <clears throat> this little negative sign attached to this 3 is how we tell if it's a left-hand limit. So it's 3 to the negative means we're talking about the left-hand limit of 3. 3 plus means we're talking about the right-hand limit. If it's just 3, if it's x approaches just 3, that means we have to look at both limits. Okay, the left and right, we have to see where it approaches. Left and right-hand limits will always have answers. Okay, so they'll always have answers that you're going to have um, and you just have to find it. So, look at it, this one with our left and right-hand limit. If we plug in 3, you see we get 0 and 0. 0 over 0. We do it for both the top and the bottom. So now what we want to do is that we want to plug in a number just less than 3. So we could plug in for this one like 2.999. Okay. The bottom one we can plug in one just above, 0 .00, or 3.001. Okay. And when we plug them in, you notice we get the same number. We don't get the exact 0 0.5, but we get close enough to assume that it's going to be 0 0.5. Okay. They both end up being the same number, which means that if the left and right hand limit are the same, the overall limit is going to be the same. Okay. So here, if the left and right hand limit approach the same number, then the limit does exist at that point. If they approach different numbers, then the limit does not exist. Okay. So the previous example, they both approached 0.5, meaning they were real. Um, that limit would exist. Now, if we look at this one and we use the limit as x approaches negative 3, okay, which we can just look at the graph. If we were to plug in a number, let's say we do this by hand, and we plug in a number a little bit smaller than negative 3, so negative 3.00009 or 0001, what we notice is that we'd be over here. Okay, a little bit below it, we'd be down here somewhere. Okay, if we plug in a number slightly larger than negative 3, we end up with a number on this side. Okay, and as you see, these numbers, one would end up being, let's say, negative, uh, this would end up being positive 9, this one would be negative 9. You see, they aren't the same number. They're far enough apart that they don't look the same. So because they aren't the same, this limit would not exist. And by looking at the graph, you can easily see that the curve at negative 3 approach different things. One goes up towards positive infinity, the other one goes off into negative infinity. Okay. So the left and right hand limits when you use them have to have the exact same for them to be to have a limit exist. If they approach different numbers then the limit does not exist. Okay. Alright so let's say we have this example. Okay. So a limit as x approaches negative one half of 3x squared times 3x minus 1 Okay. So all we do, first thing you want to do with these limits is just plug your number in. So plug in a negative one half into everything and see what you get. So we'd end up with three times negative one half squared times two times negative one half minus one. Okay. Nope. Minus negative one. So now you use your calculator. and it looks like you end up with a negative 1.5 okay so it looks like you end up with a negative 1.5 as your answer okay and that would be the limit because we actually get a number so since a number really exists that means that we have an answer. If it didn't exist, that's where we have to go left and right hand to start to see. Okay, but since when we plugged in a number, we got an actual number, we're done. We don't have to do anything else. So that would be my answer. Okay. All right. So let's say we have this one. So we have a graph above it, and we want to find the limit as a whole bunch of different limits, and we want to know if it's true or false. Okay. So we want to know which are true and which are false. So we're going to start with the first one. So we have this graph. We have some open circles. We have some closed circles and everything. So we start off with the first one. So it says the limit as x approaches negative 
1 from the positive side is equal to 1. So looking at this graph, okay, there's not an actual function. But if we take this and we approach negative 1 from the positive side, which means this side, okay, do we get 1? So does it get close to 1? And the answer there is yes. So this one would be true. Okay, so A would end up being true. Okay. B, we have as x approaches 0 from the negative side, do we get 0? And if we look at this graph, if we approach 0 from the negative side, you see we get close to 0. So that one would also be true. Let's use a slightly different color. So C, we end up going through and we go, okay, X is, uh, as X approaches 0 from the negative side, we get 1. Well, we already said that it approaches 0, but it won't be approaching 1 because, again, it's where the line is approaching. It's not what the actual value is. So the actual value is 1, but it approaches 0. So this one would end up being false. D is saying that the left hand and the right hand limits um, are equal. So they're saying that as it approaches 0 from the left and 0 from the right, that you get the same number, which the answer is yes, because they both approach 0. So that means that this one would be true. Okay. And, the la and the last one we're going to go over together is E. So E, as it approaches 0, does it exist? So as the limit approaches zero, does the actual number exist? And the answer is yes, because the left and right hand limits exist. So, or left and right hand limits agree with the same thing. So since they agree with the same thing, that means that they do exist. And there is a limit at that point. And that limit would be zero. Anyway, so take a second. Um, you know, you can pause the video and you can answer H through J. And you can see what your answers are. All right, so uh, F, like I just said, F ends up being true because it does approach zero. Uh, G ends up being false because if it approaches zero, which both of them approach the same number, that is the actual number. Even though when you plug in zero, you get a different number, you see how it's kind of a removed uh, number, um, that doesn't mean it's the limit. The limit is where the line is approaching, not what the actual number is h as h as it approaches one is one that's false and the reason why it's false is because we don't have a right hand so we have no right hand to justify it you need a left and right hand to have that limit um, i is also false okay because again you don't have a left and right hand limit for it so you don't have left and right hand limits so you can't do it and j um, negative two from the negative side ends up being uh, true because you do have a line going across here and it's touching it at 2, so that's why. Okay, so uh, let's assume that the limit as x approaches 4 of fx is 0 and the limit as x approaches 4 of gx is negative 3, and so we want to find the following. So we have the limit of gx plus 3 the limit as x of fx, the limit of uh, g squared x, and the limit of gx over fx minus 1. And so what these you can do with these is that when you have your limits, you're basically just plugging in what the limit of each one is. So like this first one can be rewritten separate. You could write it as the limit of gx plus the limit of 3. Limit of gx is negative 3. The limit of 3 is just 3. So if you take the limit with no variable, it's just the actual number, whatever it is. So this would be negative 3 plus 3, so the first one would end up being 0. Okay. All right, so take a second to find the answer to the next 3 for these. Right, so B would also end up being 0 because you'd end up with 4 times 0, okay, which gets you your answer of 0. Okay. 
uh, C, that G squared means that you take your answer and you square it at the end. So it would be negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared, which is 9. And then for D, we'd go negative 3 over, over 0 minus 1, which ends up with a 3. So 0, 0, 9, and 3 ends up being your answer for those. So you can still treat the limits as uh, your addition and multiplication and all those different properties for them. All right, that's the end of the first one.